Hey everybody, Luke here at the Fly for Life Expo and we're just about 80 minutes away from the grand opening here and uh, one of the things that we're going to do here throughout the week is interview the aerobatic teams and uh, we have uh, Team Anemone here. They will be kicking off the air show next Sunday at 9 a.m. and uh there's uh, four pilots here, myself included, and a couple set? wing walkers, and uh, we're going to uh, <laughs> ask them some questions here and let you get to know them a little yeah, bit. Uh, this will be streaming on YouTube as well as going here over the uh, MTFB radio stream. So if you're listening and uh, you want to come over and watch, go ahead, but we're in a group chat, so uh, you will be able to hear what we're saying over the stream, I do think. So... Uh, we're going to try it here and see what happens. I think I may have a uh, a problem with that, though. I just happen to think I may get a dual uh, feedback on this, but we're going to see what happens. So, uh, yeah. Hey. Okay, guys, uh, say something to me. Say hi or something. I need to check out my mic settings and everything. Hi, Luke. Hello. Hello. Hello, Luke. Hi, Luke. Okay, I think you're good then. Okay, we'll see what happens with... Hey, I, you know what I can do? I can start something else here. Uh, let me see here. I'll start that, and then I'll have a recording I can put over this if the if it screws up my video. Okay, so we're uh, streaming live here on MTFB Radio, and it's being recorded to play on YouTube a little bit later, so not to make you guys nervous or anything. And... Uh, I mean, let me get my screen settings here. And uh, we just finished a press practice station session, and uh, as you can see, everybody lived through it, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I handed out some questions here, not too far in advance, so they haven't had too much time to think about this, but we'll see what's going on. So uh, we got, uh, there's four pilots here. Uh, we got Mr. Pilot, he's our lead pilot. Destiny Bella Rosa, she's number two. I'm number three pilot, and McKenna is number four pilot, and we got uh, Luna as a wing walker, and uh, with Destiny and Flo, for some reason volunteered to be my wing walker. I don't know if she's regretted that or not, but uh, so <laughs> this, this is just a fun team and a great group of people to work with. So I'm going to throw out a question, and we're going to let our team leader, Flo, Answer it if she wants to. Flo, if you don't feel comfortable answering it, just pass it off. But uh, can you tell us what inspired you to become a wing walker? And you're actually the creator of the wing walker team. So what inspired you to get into this madness? Mm, the main reason was that I wanted to do something in aviation. But I'm absolutely lousy at flying. <laughs> and as I did a lot, of, a, a lot of gymnastics and a lot of athletics. Um, when I met Tom, the original pilot uh -huh. of our team, he, suggest, he suggested um, to go stand on the wing. He had an old wing walker plane, and he just said, well, get on and see how it looks. And it looked good. So we sort of pushed on from that, and that's how it started. Awesome. And uh, Yes, it did, yeah. look, it did look good, which inspired to get on and make it look better and, and more show like yeah that's it is a very started. well done show you know it's core you have the uh, animations for the wing walkers choreographed and everything it's very cool okay mckenna what about you what do you uh, how come you decided to get involved with this you mean why did i be become a pilot with the team you know, yes this Ew, one or the other. <laughs> I was going down a path. I, I, I've got severe OCD. I see. And, uh, you know, I came out of the military mm -hmm. and I uh, was looking for something to do with the rest of my life. And I came into SL and uh, I gravitated to this. Uh, was, uh, you know, jumping between this and beer and uh, <laughs> eventually this won out. And uh, so I stand before you today as a uh, uh, friend of Bill W's and the pilot. Awesome. Yay. Very good. Luna? Well, um, 
the truth is it was the manipulation and persuasion of McKenna. <laughs> 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 I, everybody thinks I don't leave my sim too much and I needed something to do and I needed to be social. Um, I have autism, so my social skills do suck. So um, joining the team actually helps a lot in that field. So I am grateful he talked to me into it. Yeah, well, so are we. And uh, I think you're very social. I... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Destiny. Yes, sir. What about you? you? Want me to answer? I can answer that. Yeah. Well, you know what? In real life, uh, I sit behind uh, a guy who pilots a home-built RV8, and uh, was an aerobatic flyer himself for many years in air shows around the U.S. And it just gave me such a love for flying and aerobatics, formation, etc. And it's what I wanted to do here in SL. I sure as heck can't do it in real life, so I'm doing it in the virtual world, and I love it. It's fun. That's cool. And this is a great group of people to associate with and to fly with. We have a great time together. Yeah, we do. It's it's just a lot of fun. Mr. Pilot, what about you? I was bored one day. <laughs> <laughs> No, when I was a little kid, all the hair shows I went to as a little kid in real life, I really wanted to learn how to fly, and, and uh, came to SL and figured, found out you could fly planes in SL, and I thought, wow, cool. So, and a friend of mine saw a, I believe he sent an ad out in one of the groups floor to uh, about a wing walking thing, and we decided to come look at it, and I've been here ever since. Oh, very good. And I'm glad you are. You're a great lead pilot. Thank you. And very easy to follow, so. Yeah, you're here to that. Pilot, yay. Yeah. Hand, uh, hands off. You're yeah. good. You're good. Hands down. Okay, let's go back to flow. Flo, uh, what, what's the most challenging thing about doing this? Get the poses right. Okay. There's a very simple answer to that. The, the plane moves all the time. It goes inverse, it goes up, it goes down. Uh, the poses need to be exactly in flow with the movement of the plane. And it looks very simple, but it's very tricky it's to make sure tricky. you're not hanging upside down when the plane is not. It, it simply doesn't look real. If it's not flowing, cool. And um, that's that's the tricky thing. Get the poses right. It's it's not like you click on a button and then it happens. It's like yeah. you need to click at the button exactly at the right moment in the right position. Right. Yeah. That's and that's it, the it, good thing. It's yeah. very well done. Very well choreographed. And uh, I hope when people watch our shows, they've got the cameras locked on the on the planes and watching the uh, wing walkers because that's the whole point of our show is the beautiful ladies risking their lives on top of our wings. What about you, McKenna? Most challenging thing, you're talking about real life with aviation or SL? SL. With well, SL, either one. but <laughs> I would say in real life landings. Landings are always a challenge because you have um, different circumstances that happen at the last minute, you know, there's gusts of wind and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have to worry about that as much in Second Life, but there's other challenges um, when we're up there. One of the ones that I encounter a lot here in Second Life is uh, staying on top of the throttle. I mean, essentially, a plane, like um, Flora was saying, you know, the plane goes. So you set the throttle and it'll just go. But when you're flying in uh, a formation or flying like we do, and we're flying as close as we do and everything like that, a lot of times you have to, well, being that I'm at the back of the line, I have to adjust my throttle so that I don't run into either, well, you or Destiny. And a lot of times I'll end up pulling my nose up to get some uh, resistance. And, uh, you know, I'll drop my throttle to slow back so that I can move back a little bit and space out. So that's something I'm constantly keeping an eye on. And, of course, in the radar, the mini radar, I'm always looking at the circle and seeing how far 
I am from the last dot. So mm-hmm. it you know it takes a lot of eye hand coordination, and uh, you know, and a lot of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And you know, a lot of people think that when they come to the air shows that we we're just like running a script to make the planes do everything, uh, and they don't realize that we're actually controlling them. And uh, so yeah, that's and you just can't get in it set and keep the throttle at one speed and go around the square. You have to. You constantly have to adjust things. So, yeah, that's very good. What about you, Luna? I have to go with what Flo said, the poses. Uh Uh-huh. The most important, and just hope your head does not go out (laughs) on the plane. Because I've been in situations where I've been stuck in one pose and couldn't move in in practice. And hopefully that doesn't happen during Mm -hmm. the show. How about uh, it's the, it, it's the same with the the sim crossings. Here we don't have sim crossings. If we do, and the plane crosses out of the sim, uh, all these pose hoods just mess up, mm-hmm. and then you've suddenly got a really serious problem yeah. because you need to release the last pose and need to get the HUD open again to be able mm-hmm. to get into the next one. And, uh, that, you need to click things in full motion. That's it. that's yeah. That's why that's we don't something you need to learn. Right. That's why we don't actually stream the the team communication audio out over the stream when we're doing our shows because you don't want to hear Faye or Flo cussing us out when we go across the sim boarding. But sim border. <laughs> but, no, 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 she doesn't do that. Yes. <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> Now, speaking most, of cussing, right? <laughs> the most challenging thing for you is to flying. Not okay. Is to not cuss while I'm uh, I would say probably the most challenging thing for me is just uh, like McKenna said, you're always adjusting your throttle, your altitude. Um, I fly on the opposite side of the sim from uh, pilot. And so I have to look at my mini map and watch him and his speed and make sure that we are in sync. And, and you know, that's just something else to, you know, to kind of take your mind off of what you're doing. So mm-hmm. anyhow, it's, uh, you know, it's a challenge, but, uh, you know, I love it. That's probably the hardest thing is just keeping up. And then, and of course, practice. It takes a lot of practice to do what we do. And it's a huge commitment. So we're here uh, as a team. We we come together as a team at least once a week to to train, mm-hmm. and we take it very very seriously. And I think that all of our training pays off and and shows. I think we're able to show what we do to people, and I think they can appreciate what we do. Yeah, I do too. Thank you, Mr. Mm-hmm. Pilot. Hmm, challenging. I've had to think about this one. It's not challenged. She doesn't need to answer This is that. simple for him, isn't it? Yeah, it's, just, it's, <laughs> it's like it's as easy as A, B, C, yeah. one, two, three. I'd, I'd say the lag. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Good answer. Just dealing with the yeah. lag and everything. Other than that, I don't have no challenges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a good point. And, you know, of course, we've got it pretty good here on these sims uh, with the uh, – you know, the high performance regions, but, uh, you know, when we go to other uh, venues, uh, you know, we don't have it quite as well. And, you know, when we're on the mainland, of course, lag is our, our enemy sometimes. And, uh, you know, it it is a challenge. You got to have your graphics set correctly and uh, just learn how to uh, compensate and adjust when things screw up. You know, that's, for me, that's kind of the hard Hard thing, well, when you screw up, how do you get back, get your composure back, and then, you know, get back in line and, you know, carry through with the thing without uh, totally freaking out. Okay, uh, let, let's skip down here to a few. We've kind of answered some of these. Uh, let's uh, talk about uh, advice that you would give uh, flow to a, a f- aspiring wing walker. Somebody that's one, and you're you're always needing wing walkers, right? So this could be a 
a good promotion for you to get get some more wing because we do kind of go through them pretty <laughs> easy. You know, some of them don't survive, and well, I shouldn't say that, but I guess they have to know up front you know, what they're dealing with here. <laughs> I admit I've decapitated a couple. Oops. Yeah, Luna has some uh, concrete burns on her head there too. I think. <laughs> so yeah, she's my wing walker. <laughs> so the, the thing is, most people think it's a one time only. They they think it's uh, something we do just once, mm -hmm. and then think it's over. Uh -huh. um, and then they real they realize we do this every week. And at least 10, 12 times a year on a big show. And that's putting them down a little because it's too much. Um, it takes too, up too much time for them. Um, and, and what I always try to make clear to new people is sometimes you should um, enjoy the view. Mm -hmm. um, make things different. Don't always do exactly the same because then it becomes a, a boring routine um, sometimes you just say look I'm not doing the poses I'm going to see this in mouse look and then sort of experience the thrill it's all meant to be mm -hmm. so yeah that I, go ahead go ahead I'm not sure if I'm not I'm not sure if it's the correct word in English but uh, perseverance it's um, to, no, that's to correct Yourself, yeah, that's correct. Be pushed off. Yeah. For because of some mistakes for the first time, it's like keep right. keep doing it until you're good at it, and then it suddenly becomes a lot more fun because then you be able to show other people what you're able to. Yes. Yeah. So don't be good. That, be that's, that's that's good. That's the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. What about you, McKenna? Any any advice for aspiring pilots? Yeah, I've got some. If you're considering flying in real life, the number one thing that you definitely got to learn is meteorology. Get really mm. good at it because how well you become um, an expert in meteorology is going to determine how long you live. Seriously. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, can I, cannot, I, I cannot stress that enough. It's like meteorology understanding the clouds and understanding the um you know the weather patterns and stuff is going to be very very instrumental to how long you live as a real life pilot mm. as a second life pilot you know you don't have to worry about dying but i would say if you're looking to do that here in second life start off with a a beginner plane don't start off with an f-18 but start off with a beginner plane get the basics down and then find yourself a mentor if you're looking to get into aerobatics things like that, find yourself a mentor, somebody that already flies pretty kick-ass and have them kind of show you the ropes. Yeah. I mean, no matter what yeah. you do in life, whether it's business or flying or anything else, you're going to go a lot farther, a lot faster if you can find a mentor who's kind enough to take you under their wing and show you some of the finer points. That's, that's really a good point. And, you know, most pilots that I know are more than happy to help a new pilot. You know, I, I hear it all the time and see it in group chats and things, you know, people asking a question or needing to learn how to fly. You know, I have people uh, send me, hey, can, how do I get into flying? How do I get into aviation? And so I know I know you'd be, uh, anybody on this team would be more than happy to, to help somebody to get Absolutely. into flying. And just, I know all the teams here as well. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you, McKenna. That was good. Luna? Well, um, the thing, the most important thing, you need to be detail-oriented because we have to make the poses look as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. And you have to have your attention on instructions all the time because if you're not going to pay attention, then you're going to be out of sync with all the other walkers. And that is so important, especially during show, mm -hmm. that you are mentally paying attention to every direction given or floor is going to yell at you <laughs> <laughs> oh and, and you, you don't want that to happen that that's that's a that's brutal right there <laughs> it keeps us in line destiny what what's your advice 
Um, well, you know, I just think it, it, you have to have a love for, you know, either wing walking or piloting. That's got to, you know, you have to have an interest in it because otherwise you all the mistakes you make are going to be too, uh, too heavy for you. You're not going to continue doing it. So having that love for, and, and I agree with McKenna, you got to find somebody that will help you along. It took me, I think, I had no one to help me, and it, it took me seriously, and I was here from, at, at points in my life for 10 hours a day. That's a long time. Yeah, I was it's, addicted. And uh, it took me almost a year just to learn how to land my mm -hmm, plane. Mm -hmm. I had no one to tell me how to do it or help me. So I was very mm -hmm. determined, as you can imagine. And I did, you know, I learned everything in terms of flying, you know, the hard way through trial and error. Mm -hmm. And then I was lucky enough to get on a, a team. And then I had Mr. Pilot over here to my right who helped me refine the aerobatics and the uh, formation flying mm -hmm. in, in SL and give me tips on that. Had he not done that, I, I wouldn't know what I was doing. So, yeah. and it's all paid off. I love it. It's fun. It's exciting. And. And, you know, we, do, we just love to grow and, and learn more and do more. And mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's a lot harder than it looks when you, when you sure get in, is. especially landing is it, a lot harder than it looks because most uh, sims, when you come into them, you, you cross the, the sim border and you have that moment of lag as you're lining up for the runway. And it makes it really, really difficult, so. Yeah, thank you for that, Destiny. What about you, Mr. Pilot? Well, my advice would be uh, you find the plane you're going to use and fly it constantly. Figure out what it can and cannot do or what you can do with it mm -hmm. and get used to it. That way uh, you'd be a much better pilot. That's, that's really good advice. Uh, for me, uh, when I started... Uh, flying, I just I had only been in Second Life for a couple of weeks when I got interested in it, and I got a helicopter. I think it was a, the what was that guy that used to make Apollon, and uh, you know it's kind of primitive <laughs> uh, compared to the scripts that we have now. But you know it was good, it was easier. You know I didn't have to worry about landing and taking off necessarily on a runway. I could just go up, and so I learned to you know maneuver around and to navigate. And, uh, you know, and that's a good skill to have to learn how to use your mini map and, you know, the big world map too, as well to get around. And of course, you know, people use waypoint HUDs and other things like that. I usually like to, I'm, I'm more of a spur of the moment kind of person. I decide I want to fly somewhere and I just look at the map and see where I want to go and figure out the best way to get there and then take off and, you know, monitor the the map as I go so okay uh, I've got one more question I'm just going to open this up for the group and uh, since this uh, our event here uh, uh, fly for life is a relay for life fundraiser uh, we're raising money to help uh, support the fight against cancer uh, I just want to ask you all uh, since we've been hanging out here now for a couple weeks and you know we've got have you learned anything or you want to share anything about relay for life or you know were you involved in it before is this your first involvement with it uh you know do, has it spoken to you in any way so anybody want to speak to that it's the first yeah, time i i, I could first say time. that uh, uh i could say that uh, my mom uh, passed away about five years ago from cancer, pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, uh, having in real life given to charity, especially cancer, Alzheimer's, different things, um, and getting uh, information and educating myself more and more on cancer and, you know, the struggles that people go through and the lack of real solid research. Uh -huh. uh, there has to be more and more research to tackle these problems in life uh, they're very complex and it takes money mm -hmm. and so it's a privilege for all of us to be out here to do this for charity and to raise money for cancer research and for cancer uh, to heal people from this horrible disease that's taken so many of our friends and loved ones and 
you know, we just hope that we can do a small part here to, to help in that fight. That's, thank you. That yeah, That's very uh, interesting. And I did, uh, you sp uh, spoke about your mother with pancreatic cancer. And uh, if you look on the YouTube channel, I did an interview with Jack Tracker, who created the uh, airship display up there in the museum. And uh, he, he is a survivor of pancreatic cancer. And so they actually found it kind of by mistake, by accident, and uh, he was getting something else checked out, so they caught it at stage two, which, you know, they were able to treat it, but he he had to go through quite a bit, really, and uh, so it's very interesting, but yeah, you're right, there, and there's so many different kinds of cancer, you know, there's, and it's it's such a, such a uh, horrible disease. Faye, or Flo, I'm sorry, I keep calling, I'll have to tell you why I, I think your name's Faye sometime but uh, anyway uh Flo you were going to say something there well it's it's the first time we fly for this and um mm -hmm. well, it, well one we're very pleased to be able to do now um it's um well sometimes you just almost feel sorry you didn't hear before mm -hmm. to be able to to join events um, you, you, it makes you start thinking about things and realizing what people um, have to cope with in life. And, yeah. Uh, you you, you just true. don't realize what it is until you are focused, uh, uh, until you're pointed at it and um, get to know people who've suffered these things. And that's, well, yeah, um, it it makes it makes you think, and um, it makes you wonder why people get this or why other people don't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's very good. Yes, it's 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 it makes you stand in life and realize what life is. Yeah, and that's that's uh, really I'm the very, uh, purpose very, of this, I think. Yeah, I'm I, very I pleased to able to be here. Yeah. I've walked in some RFL oh, events, God. you know, done some walking, you know, mm -hmm. doing the RFLs. I've done that in the past. Mm -hmm. and, you know, but as far as participating, you know, in something like this, this is the first fly for life that, you know, the SL has ever had. But, um, yeah, so I, I've done that. But, yeah, it, one of the hardest parts, I think, about the thing about cancer, especially with Second Life, because you meet so many people. I mean, I couldn't tell you. I've got a, a friend list that has still people in it that, you know, that passed away from cancer in mm -hmm. second life. Mm -hmm. And I keep their names in there, you know, to remember. And, uh, you know, there's some of their pictures, you know, you look back and remember, you know, when they did this or they did this and, you know, they were having a good time and, you know, but behind the avatars were all physical people and we all have, you know, physical problems or mental problems or whatever we have in our real life. And, that's the part that we don't see when we're in here. And it's something I try to stay mindful of that, you know, about half the people in here, you know, are healthy and half the people in here are sick. And that That's we can really lose true. any one really of our, true. any one of our, our friends or acquaintances or anything. So, you know, we make the most of the time that we have. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. And I have several friends, you know, that in here that I lost and I keep them on my friends list. Uh, as well just so so I could remember them and uh, a couple of them I was actually able to capture in videos and uh, you know they're they're on in some of the videos that we did some of the aviation videos and they're on YouTube and those became really special you know after after the people passed so okay anybody else have any comments to make about anything here uh, before I cut you loose I know some of you have things to do and we're going to be, we're out less than an hour away from the official opening here, so I've got to take a pause and get everything set up for the advancing hordes that are going to descend on this place, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Not comments. Um, one little um, um, addition, I would say, is that uh, you also like to know what we like the audience to take away from our shows yes is mainly 
a smile. We, oh, very good point. Oh, yes. You um, always make audience happy. I'd be pleased to be shown up for the show and see it. And uh, I always try to add, like, please don't be jealous. We've done this for eight years. And uh, but just don't don't try to be as good after one day. Just enjoy the show and not um, sort of try to copy. It's um, that's not that's not what we show. We we show for trying to make you happy. You've been there and seen it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very good. I'm going. I'm going to kind of. Cam around the hangar here and pan out as we close out. And uh, we thank you all for listening in. And uh, YouTube audience, uh, you'll get to see it here on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back with some more teams. And, again, uh, I'll be back on the air here live in about uh, 50 minutes for the grand opening. We'll have some music and uh, some other stuff going on here. So, uh, hey, thanks for listening and watching. Happy flying, and we'll see you in a few.